Hi everyone, this is Nick Sintel from the OSINT Curious Project and today we're going to do a short 10 minute tip looking at the social media platform Snapchat. Now Snapchat is really really popular social media platform, it has something like 200 million users or more, uh, but it's always been a bit of a challenge from an OSINT point of view because it uh, is only really available as a mobile phone app. Uh, you might have seen it on an Android phone or an iPhone but there isn't really much in the way of a web interface that lets us interact with it in the way we can with other social media platforms. But today we're going to look at a couple of um, resources that have become available in recent years that will allow us to interact with Snapchat a little bit more and we'll still find that there's loads of information we can get out which is going to be useful for OSINT and we're going to look at how to do that. Um, so we don't need a mobile phone for this, we're just going to use a web browser. And the first site we're going to look at is um, the official Snapchat map, which you can find. The URL uh, for this is map.snapchat.com. Uh, the Snapchat map is an absolutely fantastic tool for an OSINT point of view. Um, basically, when Snapchat users choose to do so, they upload content, it's geotagged, um, and it's available on the Snapchat map for anyone to see. This is the sort of the public feed of um, users generated Snapchat content. So we look at the map and we see these little hotspots appear and that indicates uh, there's a lot of Snapchat activity going on there. Uh, and this is a really great resource um, for digging into events that are happening in lifetime or near lifetime um, because the lifespan of the data that the users are uploading is so short. Nothing really lasts longer on the Snapchat map, uh, longer than 24 hours, certainly no more than two days. Um, so if you want to know what's going on in an area um, right now or has gone on very recently, this is a great tool for doing that. Uh, the downside of that is if we want to know what was happening three days ago or last week or last month, that data isn't going to be, be available to us. Uh, but shortly we're going to look at how we can capture data when we need it so we don't lose it uh, and we don't our investigations and our research aren't uh, thwarted um, by the short lifespan of some of the data. So. We can dig into anywhere on the Snapchat map. I'm going to choose a random city in the UK. Uh, I apologise in advance for any content you see because of the nature of this. Um, I have no way of knowing in advance uh, what I'm going to see on Snapchat. But you see as I zoom into a city like this you get these little blue patches um, in different places which indicate uh, a lot of video uploads have been made from that location. So we zoom into middle of Manchester in northern England. I'll click on one of those hotspots and we see suddenly loads and loads of videos that have been uploaded from that location. Um, we can just click through them, uh, they will all, they'll always autoplay and we just see lots of different videos um, from various parts of, of the city. And this is great as an OSIN resource because A because it's very current information and because users have to geotag it when they upload it, um, we know it's, go it's going to be in that location. It's really hard to fake. And the fact that the data also has a really, really short lifespan means that it's much more likely to be genuine. It's hard to post fake material um, with fake coordinates and with fake time settings uh, to the Snapchat app. So you see as we're going through these videos that are playing, um, some of them have these overlays on where users have added uh, their own usernames, for example. Um, they've added little tags, things like that. They add these little labels. Um, but it's really, really hard um, to attribute any of these videos to a user unless they do something. They add these little snap. Um, sorry, just saw it there before it went off. These little snap codes with their username and profile picture on in the bottom corner. And there is a way to capture these, which we'll see in a minute. Now if I wanted to save this to my computer for, for later before it disappeared, uh, I find there's actually no way for me to right click and save any of this. So if you want to keep any of these videos, we're going to have to access them via the developer console in the browser. And the way we do that is the same on pretty much any browser. Uh, we just press F12 and we see the developer console. Now the developer console is available, uh, I'm using Google Chrome today, uh, but it's available in any Chrome based browser, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, and it all works in roughly the same way. So you should be able to reproduce uh, the same techniques at home that I uh, you see me using here now. So 
we're only really interested in videos. You'll see if you look in the, as these videos are loading on the screen, you'll see in the bottom here, there's loads and loads of data going back and forth. We're only interested in the uh, videos. So we click on network. We're not, in, we don't want all, we're just gonna choose media. And then we'll see um, suddenly all these, as videos load in the background, this, all these lists of um, media.mp4 files appear here. So one of those will be a Snapchat video that we're interested in. So let's say, we'll right click on say, open a new tab. And there we go. We've got one of the videos that we saw earlier uh, of a cyclist out on the street uh, somewhere in Manchester. And you'll notice that now we're viewing it this way, having accessed it through the developer console, there's this little option in the bottom corner to click and download. There we go. So we can now save that. Um, it won't be overwritten by Snapchat and we'll be able to keep it and save it on our own computer. Right click and save as if you want to do that or download it that way. And what you'll notice, I don't know if it's clear, but there's actually this blurring in the middle of the screen. And the reason for that is that previously there would have been some sort of uh, sticker or label uh, on there. And there's a way for us to bring that back if we want to. So you'll notice that uh, Snapchat videos all have the same file name. They're called media.mp4. But there's a little trick here. If we delete media.mp4 and change that to embedded.mp4, we actually see the original video with the image overlaid on top, which we may or may not want to do, depending on what our case is. Because obviously videos, the more stickers they have on, the actual content is less, less clear. It depends what you need it for. But if you want to uh, get rid of that video, that sticker again, we just delete embedded. I'll change that back to media and the sticker's gone. You can see a slight blurring where it was, but it's a much clearer video if you want to use it for something like uh, geolocation purposes, for example. So that's a Snapchat map. The next Snapchat feature we're going to look at uh, is kind of similar. Um, it's probably the closest thing there is to a public feed for Snapchat content. And this is the world of the Snapchat story. Now again, most Snapchat content that's available that's available and generated by most users remains private. It is not publicly accessible. People have to um, choose to um, feature their videos in the public Snapchat story. Um, and Snapchat, and come with other platforms, um, serves content that it thinks you'll be interested in or content which is being heavily promoted. Um, so we're just going to choose one of these videos and we'll see that they're working in a rough, fairly similar way to the Snapchat map. So this, uh, this is a video uploaded by DJ Khaled. Now before we look at the video itself, just notice the URL here. It's uh, story.snapchat.com, which is always the main Snapchat story website, but then forward slash s forward slash username. So in theory, if you had a Snapchat username and they had made public Snapchat content available, um, you could take that username and append it to the URL here that after the .com forward slash s forward slash insert the username there uh, and you may be able to see any public content that they've uploaded although we should bear in mind that the vast majority of Snapchat content generated by users is not public. So this is DJ Khaled and this is a video that he's uploaded <clears throat> and again it's very similar to the Snapchat map is in there's no uh, easy way to interact with it uh, in the same way um, as there were with some of these Snapchat map videos. So again, in a very similar way, we bring up our network tab, and we see instead of a media file here, the format is slightly different. It begins with this blob, and then they're followed by a link to the Snapchat story. Uh, but we, we right-click on that, open link in new tab, and we've got the video again by itself with that little download option in the corner, should we wish to download that and keep it for later. So although Snapchat content is short-lived, um, that there's not a barrier to us preserving it and keeping it for as long as we need for our OSINT investigation. Uh, I hope you guys found this useful, uh, this little 10 minute tip. We have loads of other 10 minute tips on our website at osintcurio.us. Uh, there's loads of them available there, so check out the rest of the videos on this channel and some of our blog articles on the website for more tips on social media. I hope you enjoy this, thanks.